Thanks for staying with us now. Engaging marginalized youth presents a significant challenge in our society because they are often disconnected from the distrust, the system slash environment in which they live in. Yet meaningful youth engagement is a key concept not only for optional youth development, but also as a rather optimal youth development, rather, but also as a catalyst for system change to improve sis, uh, so, uh, support um, for high risk marginalized youth and families. Importantly, youth should be more respectfully acknowledged as a key contributor to youth development and system change. So how can we begin to engage our youth uh, for impact, passion, and profit? Now, um, please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation, send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081 803 You can also tweet at us at Wayshow Africa, one with the hashtag Wayshow. Oh, sorry, today we have an issue with our WhatsApp line. So I just, I had gone before I remembered. So if, if you can leave a message on YouTube or Twitter, we'll try to search for it. But sorry, we, we can't do WhatsApp today. Um, Lady, quickly, and Norma, I want to um, hear your two cents on this conversation before I bring in our guest in a, in a minute. So keep yes. it really short, yes. right? If you, if you look at impact youth, Mm -hmm. and um, um, youth engagements, mm -hmm. impact, passion, and profit, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of young people are very passionate about a lot of things, right? But some of them have not been able to translate that passion into profit. profit. And again, some also have the capacity for great impact, but they just don't know how to navigate that, you know? So if you were to look at the Nigeria of today, with all the plethora of challenges that we have, there are also opportunities, you know, mm -hmm. for impact, and you know profit so how would you try to engage today's youth what would you use i say this is where mentors come in mm. when you know that you have a purpose instead of having conferences where it's the same old same old attending the conferences actually go out and start impacting the next generation i get fed up when i see the women conferences that you know the one i'm talking about i'm like it's the same thing you keep doing all the time can you go out and reach out to the younger people and bring them in instead of showing your spoots on Instagram, because that's what your purpose is supposed to do. Money tends to follow purpose at the end of the day, but it's usually not the catalyst for giving your time to something. Mm -hmm. right. I agree with uh, Laide because um, this is grossly lacking in Nigeria, mm. where we have people who people can look up to. In fact, it's something I personally struggled with mm -hmm. for a long time while I was a young person. I couldn't find people who I could say, I want to look up to this person. Most mm -hmm. of the time, it was somebody outside of the confines of Nigeria. Mm -hmm. So having people that you can look up to, having people that you can, that can train and mentor people, and um, also information is key. That's what we started with, isn't it? Information is very key. People have access to their phones and data and all of that. What information are they using? How are they processing this information? for their, their, their productivity. Mm. You also have the aspect of people finding the Nigerian setting impossible to thrive, mm. right? So a lot of brain drain is going on. People are looking for opportunities outside. There are opportunities here, but do we know about them? Mm. Do we, we have access to them? Do the Nigerian youth have access to these things? Mm. The government, they feel, has failed them. What are the other options? A lot of them have gone into um, Yahoo Yahoo and kidnapping. We saw the video of the young man the other day, the banker. That's how desperate people have become. So mm. the Nigerian youth need opportunities that are viable, that uh, are, are impactful, and can help them to even become the mentors that younger people can look up to Absolutely. in the future. I would just also add that, you know, one thing that I've noticed, you know, um, now, the trend for impact and you know passion and all of that, or engagement rather, youth engagement is is tilting towards the tech space. But Absolutely. again, we, we can't mm -hmm. also leave out a major one, which is why even we're having our guest today, uh -huh. which is sports. Right, mm -hmm. a lot of youth engagement can happen from that sector. But let's um, bring in our guest, Barista Damola Awashika, is the founder CEO of Hope Dreams Nigeria, a developmental program which teaches. Um, the play and perfection of basketball to youth. It was established in 2016 and has m <laughs> mentored almost 3,000 youth. He was the founder of Oyo State Basketball Captain in the 80s, um, junior and senior nation camp invitee, and um, immediate past vice chairman, Oyo State Basketball Association. And he's joined us live. 
a gentleman in studio. He came very early, might I add. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Thanks for having me. All right, so I mean, this is a fantastic conversation to have because when I read your profile, I said it's so, it's so easy for us to just quickly um, give a topic, which is, you know, some Wednesdays we try to do profit to, um, passion to profit, right? So I said, okay, you know what, let's, a bit, let's tie it into the youth engagement more and all of that and how we can tie both um, passion, profit, impact while we're engaging the youth. I mean, because that's what I see that you have done with this project that you've started, right? You're smiling because it's... And it's, it's, it's the profit. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought I was making sense. Smile <laughs> the profit. Profit, you know? Profit. But the profit is... No, so profit is not really profit. financial. Well, no, right. Yeah, right? Your yeah, right, reward yes. is in heaven. Your reward is in heaven. <laughs> <laughs> but, but we it's more satire, please. But we need some money. <laughs> it's more satire. <laughs> thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having All me. All right, so, I mean, this is a conversation that is very apt at this time because, again... The population of the Nigerian youth is, I think we are currently over 70% of the population are yes. youth, right? And so you cannot ignore that huge chunk. If we say we are over 200 million people mm. and 70% of that is the youth, mm. it means that we have to be paying attention. And with all the drama happening, there is problem of education where ASU has been on strike forever. Yep. You know, there are, I mean, Norma had mentioned rightly, brain drain happening. Mm. There's a lot of fraud going on. People are thinking, okay, you know what, let me look for alternate sources of income. So they are going into fraud, hence the case of the banker and all of that. So there's the a lot of things hitting the Nigerian youth from all angles, right? So, but if we wanted to engage the Nigerian youth for impact, then hyping them to guide their passion to profit. How, where would be a good place to start? And maybe you should tell us a little bit about your journey, you know, why you decided, you know, basketball was it for you? My basketball to me is life. Mm -hmm. It's what I know and what I've always known. So um, what made me start this program was how I personally was impacted. I was in primary school, somebody came and uh, spoke to us and said, um, who's interested in, interested in playing basketball? Enough to be interested. So a few of us went and that was how my basketball journey started. So um, hence, I owe that to others. Somebody planted that seed in me. And the, the least I can do is give to, back. to give it back to, to, to the youth. So that was how it all started. So that decision was informed by, I was out of the country for, for a, couple of a couple of decades. And before I left, the state team, the state team was full of stars, um, good players, including myself, mostly home-based. Virtually mm -hmm. everybody was home-based. So I came back and I saw these, the state team and I kept asking, oh, where's this, where's this person from? Where's that person from? Oh, he's from Asaba, he's from Enugu, he's from Gunners Web. Don't you have any local Digital players? Home yeah. <laughs> no home, no, there's, oh, kids don't play basketball anymore. I went to a basketball playing school. Mm. Everybody knows Luella, one of the best yeah. basketball mm, I do. They were so, boyfriends. Um, <laughs> go, went to, Lu found out Luella, don't even have a strong basketball team. So I, th I thought mm. you know, we have to change this the narrative. Uh, the, the narrative. Mm. So I thought, all right, what's the best way to get this to grow the game again? Get something started. And that birthed um, hoop dreams. So I thought, okay, let's get these kids back on the court. It's uh, create hel healthy, hel healthy children, too. healthy youth, yeah. and you know, it all kicked off. <coughs> Before I knew it, we had first year. I think we had about five, six hundred kids um, throughout the year. So it's been ongoing since then, and hence um, this is our seventh, seventh season. Mm. May I speak? <laughs> Go ahead. I happen to know Uncle Damola from before I was born. He's my brother and he were friends. In the womb. Mm -hmm. and before they born me, <laughs> no, ma, before they born me, we knew him in my family. And personally, I know him much more than that. My late sister, who I still cried speaking about yesterday, mm. was his fiancée at the time of her oh, death. Oh, wow. So he's a brother-in-law that never married, but he's a brother-in-law. Whether never you like it or and not. He, <laughs> he's, he's, he's talked with me. <laughs> One thing who I else find... Can, who can detach yourself? Nobody can. You know I hook have said it that when I hook you, I hook you. <laughs> hook, line, and sinker. I remember when he was in the UK and when he started thinking of coming to Nigeria because he had a very thriving business in the UK. He had young kids 
and he there was no reason to come back home. Do you understand? I, I think the first thing that you even came for was the traditional mm -hmm. wedding of a marriage that had been in existence for, you know, Nigerian. Whether you go to court or you don't go to court, you will eventually come and do traditional wedding. Mm -hmm. I think that was what brought him to Nigeria. But I've always known him to have a passion for basketball. And I, caught, I got really touched by the fact that he decided that, okay, let me put profit making business aside, aside and, and start impacting people's lives. Because we remember when the Akim Zolaju ones came out of Nigeria, mm -hmm. and um, this other guy that um, Felicia Rashad's elder sister is married to, mm -hmm. or Felicia herself is married to, I think we had quite a few Nigerian players that probably were ring bearers, or what do they call them, all stars at the time. But we're not producing that anymore in basketball. And it's not the height that determines who has the skill. That's what people don't understand. So when you have someone that has lived it, and has lived it in play and in pay, and then comes back to explain it, because what we don't get right in Nigeria most times is we put the wrong people in charge of things. But like I said, mentorship mm -hmm. is what matters. Absolutely. When you, someone like him comes back to give back to the country without even asking for money, give back to them, Eventually, there will be international bodies, probably, that will start calling you. We want to do something to just change the lives of mm -hmm. the youth. Mm -hmm. Profit will come, even though it's not profit. No, it's you will get your daily bread. Right. He didn't ask you that you wanted to do that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, 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 but just to, 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 to ask a question off of what um, yeah. Lady has just said, because, I mean, um, I know a friend of mine that a brother was scouted from Nigeria, but eventually when he got it into the U.S., he had to switch to the American um, football. Um, uh, football. football because, uh, you know, the basketball structure is a bit specialized, right? So if you really want to look at the structure of... Because basketball is one sport that is really, really... We like call it um, lucrative for the children. It's yeah. it's abroad it is, you know. But I, mean, I, I when don't you know. Have a LeBron James do we have a millions. place, you know, in, as Nigerians mm -hmm. in the international space? Because young people are watching. They mm -hmm. really love it. They have the height for it. They have the build for it. They love the game and all of and that. But how are they going to convert that into being professional? Like the way because what you're saying now. Most schools don't really take bas basketball seriously. Most times it's football, mm -hmm. you know, and probably sprints. So swimming, athletics. race, and athletics and running and all mm -hmm. of that. Basketball is a bit specialized. So y you find it, you know, very rare these days among schools. So how, how do we get them to the Le LeBron? Okay, let's, let me put basketball aside for a minute. Mm. Okay. okay. The essence of uh, wh whoever you find, whichever profession you find people, they're always involved in sports one way or the other. So Absolutely. you have doctors, you have lawyers mm. who go and play tennis, who mm. play soccer, who, you know, Squash. even um, uh, Fashala when he was governor played mm. soccer every yeah. Sunday. Yeah. Play yeah. football every day. Yes, time. Play, play, play. So the thing about sports is all, what drives my passion mm. is getting, raising healthy children, children. healthy kids. I mm. So I go around schools in Ibadan and I'll speak to to them and try and explain the benefit of getting involved in sports and trying to erase this notion that I can be a sports person mm. and be a professional person. No, no, and white collar job. No, no, and still, and still be a brilliant um, student. student. Oh, okay. Okay. Student. And I say to them, I'm an example. I played through university. I played through even in law school. Mm -hmm. I left law school. I left school to go and play a tournament in Sokoto. You know, exactly. so. I try to tell them the benefit of um, sports and education. And I make the analogy, I usually use the analogy of if you have two kids, same height, same size, same age, in the same class, one goes home every day and goes and sits down, eats, uh, watches TV, doesn't do any physical Couch activity. Potatoes. Couch potatoes. Couch potatoes. <laughs> and the other one goes and plays sport for an hour or two, the comes back, eats, Get, sleep soundly when they get to school the next day the mm. kid that's played sports <coughs> will be more alert sure. mm. than mm -hmm. the child that hasn't done any sports at all okay. so even though basketball is my primary focus when parents bring their kids and they you know they're reluctant to play basketball I say look madam sir don't force them to play mm. do they do any sport any other sport says no 
at that age, at that formative age, mm. allow your child to be involved in at least two or three sports. Let them explore. Yeah, one racket game, one team mm. game, one whatever. So you mean, don't you know force them into Just a, one. A into one. one. They'll find they'll find their niche. Mm. I played virtually all the all the all the sports, all the games when I, I was know. in school, and I fell in love with basketball. It was natural for me. So then going back to your question, mm -hmm. I have, we have, when I say I, I mean, I have other volunteers and mm -hmm. coaches. Yes. When a child, when a child comes, when a child comes onto the basketball, I need, I can watch someone play for an hour mm -hmm. and, and I'll know whether game. he's going to be a player mm -hmm. eventually, mm -hmm. a, a prospect. But the same token, there are others where you see them and you know, look, you're lacking in this area, and then that's where the mentoring comes, comes in. in. I try to shift them the right in the right direction. Yep. You know, you're not doing this right. You're doing that right. You're doing that. But most importantly, an average child Nigerian who's athletic <coughs> that has the fundamentals of basketball mm. Mm. can transfer the skills. It's basketball is so is so unique. It's so. Yeah. dynamic that you can transfer that skill Whoa. to other sports mm. so you're using your hands you're using your legs you're Is jumping your, you're, you know uh, body coordination yeah, yeah. Engagement. full yes. body engagement so you can transfer a good basketball player can be a goalkeeper it can be you know you can transfer mm. your skills to, so it's easy for nigerian kids to make that transition mm. when they get to the u.s and go to american football mm. or go to athletics Watch, or you know, mm. all that, um, yeah, sports. other sports um, mm. where coaches in, um, unfortunately, there's more science involved in America than here. Yes. Yeah. So they can, you know, look at the body the dynamics and, and, and then say, look, switch you yeah, to this is, this, you, you are better suited. I think, that, I think, I think that was what happened. Yeah, you're better suited actually to built for, for American football. You know what, let's quickly go on a very short break, right? When we come back from that break, we'll continue the conversation. Stay with us, we'll be right back. All right, thanks for staying with us. Now, if you just tuned in, we're discussing the topic, Youth Engagement for Impact, Passion, and Profit. And we have with us Barista Damola Awoshika. Now, please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, we do not have WhatsApp today. <laughs> please send us a message on YouTube or Twitter. Uh, we apologize for our WhatsApp people. No vex. Today was just a funny day. All right, so, I mean, um, Noma, you had a question, then I'll come back yes, to you. Uh, uh, I wanted to piggyback off what he was saying to ask the question that, uh, okay, you were just, while you were just talking, I remember the movie that I watched, and I watch every time I have the opportunity, Coach Carter. I don't know if you know that Coach movie Carter, yeah. Yeah. about him training and disciplining. And at the end of the day, the students knew how to play and to transfer that discipline from basketball to their grades. Mm -hmm. So I'm coming from where you were saying, being able to share what you learn to other aspects of your life. And we're talking impact, we're talking passion, we're talking profit. So how do young people begin to find ways or access opportunities that expose them to being able to make impact with their skills, being able to make impact uh, through their passions and make profit for themselves? Because that is a, a very key aspect mm -hmm. as well dealing with the times that we're in? So, um, we don't just teach the game of basketball. So it's sports and education. Mm. I ensure, I monitor, I and my staff, my coaches and other volunteers, make sure that team members make sure we mon monitor the academics, the, the academics mm. through school. So we get any, um, any report from, it, from any parent that a child is not doing too well at that home or in school. Mm -hmm. They're banned for a little while until they know, get they're, back they're, back, they're back online. So the other thing that we teach, which impacts on passion, on their pa well, passion and translating their passion into profit, profit making, yeah. is through sports, we teach a lot of life skills. Mm. Mm. So a sports person learns dedication, it learns hard work, it learns um, Team. teamwork, it learns 
mental strength. Mm. You're playing a game. You're playing against stronger, stronger mm -hmm. kids. You know. How to be able to strategize. Yes, you know, know how to manage your fears mm -hmm. when you're. You know, you have to put in extra hours to your training. That's that's Master discipline. Skill. It's early coach, um, training starts at eight. You know, if you don't get that, get there at eight. That's you're gonna run. Yes. 10 laps of the tracks, so or you're going to do mm -hmm. 100 push ups. And so, so you wake up early. Yeah, so a lot of that, um, the le we teach them a lot of social skills through sports. And uh, what I found when we first started was some of the kids were not that well behaved. Mm. Um, partly because of the, back the, because of the background. Mm. And then the way they start to watch us the coaches, the way, the way we relate, the way we manage situation, mm. and then they start to learn. I remember particularly one, one girl that was really dist disruptive, and she, she came from a private school. Mm. Most of the uh, majority of the kids were public school um, kids, so mm. she was a bit snobbish and you know, wouldn't want anybody to talk to her. You can't speak your near her, she was always complaining. Mm. Speaking vernacular. By the time she spent a few weeks, she became the leader of the group, mm. of the girls. Okay. She was the go-to person. Potential nice. for leadership. Yeah. So she, she became the leader of the group. So she went, so we had to find a way to encourage and that and change. Out. And at the end of the season, I just, we just said, look, let's, let's compensate this girl. Mm. So we, get, we gave her an award for best oh. attitude towards training. Awesome. And that completely changed her attitude. By the time she was um, old, old, too old for the program, because it's 5 to 18, okay. but by the time she had left school, was now over 18, she was literally begging to come back oh. and volunteer and be a, and be, be a mentor, be a, yeah. be a, mm. a trainer mm. to, to the younger ones. So this is actually interesting. First of all, I, I'm feeling very, very, very not happy that it's only in your state. It's only in Ibadan. Yep. Okay. Because now I'm, I'm wondering, we need, How do we kids? need to How be able to replicate this, this everywhere else. across this all 36 states of the country. So That's not just huge. because it is maybe sports. I have actually seen people's lives strong. My, my boys, are, I have both boys, and they're all taller than me. Mm. They're six foot two, whatever. And their favorite sport is basketball, basketball. right? Mm. And I know how much discipline it takes for them to be able to do their practice and all of that, still yeah. have time to for study school. and all of that. So I know what the infusion of sports can do to the educational sector. Because we're complaining that Nigeria, our education is comatose right now. Um, how do we get us back? Because there used to be times in Nigeria where we had the Nuga games, where people would actually yeah, go compete. But it, it's, not a, it's, it's not as as, it was. as, as it, it was then. And because you know, my mom they ran for the project. My mom, mom, about my mom ran for Bendel. Hmm. She ran hundred meters. She's a fantastic sprint uh, person. She ran hundred meters oh, but, oh, for Ben. Oh, ben <laughs> oh, ben <there. laughs> you know. But you see, her father never encouraged her mm -hmm. because he, he didn't believe that a girl needed to do, do all of those things. Sports. But thank God that all those stereotypes have been shattered, you know, over the years. But I'm saying that there's still there's still a lot more that can be done. I organize a board game tournament I was going every to year. Interject, you yes. mentioned that. We bring 3,000 children together to play chess, wow. Scrabble, and IO. So I am doing what you're doing, but I'm using the board mental, games. you know, yeah. board games and all of that to be able to translate into, you know, reforming the educational mm -hmm. sector. Mm -hmm. So I understand this vision clearly, mm -hmm. and I know how powerful it can become. So if we were looking, because 2023 is around the corner, there are simple things like this. That can, that can change, change. the trajectory of mm -hmm. Nigeria, the that game. can change the kind of people we're churning out and all of that, Ch the kind of children we're churning out, and they are a lot more, you know, directed, focused, and all of that. How more do we begin to, involve how do we begin to take this vision and replicate it across the country? What are the government, you know, what are, I mean, what would be a good place An ideal situation say to a government them. should partner with something as you know great as this what would how would that partnership what would it look like i we have the unique opportunity that um it's an opportunity then again i see that i see it as a disadvantage so we have the unique opportunity of having a large center mm -hmm. which we use which is at amasimba stadium okay. and the the, the the current governor has kind of refurbished and remodeled 
So now we have three courts. Hmm. So it's easy for us to split the kids into, which we've always had, Seven three, groups. three categories, hmm. under, under 18s, under 14s, and under 10s. Yeah. So um, <coughs> the, the, I'm losing my line of thought. Okay, so however, in Lagos, where you think the same is missing, hmm. you'd be amazed hmm. the number of academies that, that are in Lagos. Mm. For basketball. I can, basketball. I can at least, off the top of my head, I can mention 20. Wow. Because mm. Yaba uses that a lot. We, the, the difference course. between other academies and ours, ours is a, a, a long, drawn out um, program. program. So we start in January, I end, end of July. Yeah. So mm -hmm. seven months of serious Rigorous, continuous intensive, intensive. Routines, so it's almost like school to the kids yeah, yeah. so it's continuous mm. you find some that will drop out they'll come because they get a, a, a some freebies mm. free t-shirts free <laughs> shoes occasionally <laughs> they'll get their t-shirts and never come back but i've seen kids have done that a year later a few months oh, later and i've seen them and i'm thinking oh you didn't come i haven't seen you for a while but your game has improved you say yeah oh, sorry sir it's because mm. the distance from, from his house yeah. to the stadium. Mm. So that's why I say it's, it's a blessing and a curse. curse. And a curse. Mm. Mm. The whole of Ibadan, as big as Ibadan is, there's only, that's probably the only functional stadium. public mm. facility. facility. Mm. So, so you see where government comes yes. in, that we have. Mm. Yeah, so that's the only functional, apart from that and Liberty Stadium. Liberty Stadium is not it that. doesn't do as much. It's not as good as. So everybody has to come far and, far and wide, wide to come. But the point is, they will come, they'll start, they get introduced to the game, mm -hmm. and then they go away, you don't see them for weeks, and mo um, weeks months, or years. Mm -hmm. By the time you see them, you see that there's been improvement. some improvement so in, so they've been in doing their game. Else. So, yeah. so you've planted the seed in them. They can mm -hmm. go elsewhere. So I, I'm not discouraged if you come for two a month, days, two months, or you don't come anymore. At least that seed. So anywhere you go, mm -hmm. and say, oh, Oh, this, they're this playing basketball. basketball. Oh, I know how to play basketball. Yeah. Oh, you know, they will get. In, they, they just get into the game and just run with it. Mm. I like the idea, I, I, and I wish government because all you, I mean, you mentioned what I was looking for is the facility, mm -hmm. and the facility shouldn't be far off from. So every so, for instance, you must every mandate every estate, every community. Have a, have a sporting facility. Yes. Be it tennis, be it basketball, you know, let every... So imagine different pockets of estates mm. having a basketball court, a tennis court. You know, in my house, we're very sporty. Mm. So even without government, we have the basketball uh, uh, loop. We have the table tennis, you know, uh, in, in the house. In, in Ireland, in, and football, every quarter. Right? Let me, sorry, let me... Sorry to, yeah. to, to cut you short. 1,004. Yes. Yeah. There's 1,004 the 1, 1, 1, 4 units there. Mm. And they have, I think they have two, 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 two courts, but only one. Tennis courts. They have tennis yeah. courts, we but one basketball court. basketball court. Out of the 1,004 units, you would have at least one youth in every two home. Mm. That Thanks. is interesting. Basketball. No, no. Just a youth. Just, yeah. like, okay. just a youth. So there should, be, the... there should be a dedicated program in places like that right. that will them, engage, right. Right. engage yeah. those kids mm. into any sport. Mm. Because we are complaining Back that in the they days, used they used to write. That's what I was saying. You know? Sorry. In Ireland, there, you can't build a cluster of houses without creating a park, a sports oh, center. So, and sports center is everything. They would have a basketball court a for pool. rainy season, Gym. for outdoor, yeah. mm -hmm. for cycling, everything. When you talk about government, and we keep saying government, 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 the people that wine and dine with government are a lot of the members of the private sector. They sit there and they claim they have CSRs, co um, what corporate do they call social responsibilities. responsibilities. Maybe when we talk more and more about these things, they know where to drive their money towards because they don't seem to be reaching people the way they should. Mm. And they keep pumping money. For instance, see when COVID happened and they said, Dr. Dollar donated, what was it? $10 million? Mm. Do people have to die before you bring money to costs? You know, so let me, which brings me mm. back to culture. Okay. How can we, because it's Change obvious that it is not our culture in Nigeria. Mm. 
mm. right? We have people who are passionate about this, but when something becomes a culture for you, yes. you will create an enabling environment, mm -hmm. and that is what is grossly lacking. Mm -hmm. Even on your stage, you just have one facility that mm -hmm. is catering to one spot, um, spot in itself, and there are several other opportunities in different diverse sports. The yes. largest city. In, yes. in Nigeria, in Nigeria mm -hmm. West yes. Africa. Yes. So, how, so where largest. does culture <laughs> come in, and how can we begin to change the culture and the narrative in Nigeria, so that because it's a very, very lucrative opportunity that we are not tapping into at all. How can we begin to change this? Basketball <laughs> is <laughs> basketball <laughs> is to me it's the most entertaining, the most the eco ecosystem within basketball is huge. Mm. Is the most fashionable. That's what I'm saying. They like it's, this it's cool. Yeah, it's, 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 cool. it's the most fashionable <laughs> sport. Um, in a game of basketball, you have four quarters, mm. and you watch the NBA. You see how much entertainment mm. goes to basketball. Mm. You can't have that in any other sport, mm. but basketball. So you can have a basketball game. You have that. You have. Um, cheerleaders come and dance, you have artists that will oh, come no, and I sing, you have all that. So <laughs> there's so there's so much. We have, you know, um, name, name it. Yeah. So in changing the culture, there were, mm, the, the it's, 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 it's gradual. Yeah. It's a gradual process. There were times in Nigeria when women didn't play football. Yeah. Now, you know, they're, they're beginning to pay they're attention. Football players, mm. female football players are superstars. Everybody knows Oshana. Aziza. Aziza <laughs> Everybody knows that. So, you know, it's a, it's a gradual, it's a gradual culture. You know, some of the, Change. some of the, some of, some of the, um, what's it called? Some of the, the sports? no religious okay. beliefs mm. yes. will not allow the girls to to play, to to play because they feel <laughs> yeah even that is changing because mm. they feel they're exposing parts of their body mm. <clears throat> excuse me so all all that is changing but most importantly or the ma the major factor mm. that has um, limited sports participation in Nigeria or well Nigeria we're talking about Nigeria now. No, no, it's not just fun. It's that belief by parents that, look, mm. you're wasting your time. Mm. I didn't send you to school to go and be playing mm. sport, face your book. Mm. And that narrative, that mentality, it's, it's, been, it's, it's been broken down. Things are beginning to change. And you can, people can see, so yeah, people can see that you can combine well. both. And so more parents are more receptive. Even the enlightened ones, the elites, mm. previously, were the ones who didn't who didn't allow their kids to to participate in sports. Because they've invested sports. a lot yes. of money. Now schooling. they're probably the ones whose kids are more involved in sports than mm. the, the ones who don't the, the ones that the have not. Because the have nots is difficult for them to Even you know pay. afford the necessary yeah, wear and gears these, and, yeah. and stuff. Absolutely. So that 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 culture is gradually changing, but we, we need to do a lot more Much than. More. Uh, okay, so for someone like you now, having had the um, benefit of going to certain schools, having a group of alumni, students, and people that you're in contact with. Mm -hmm. Who have you spoken to, or what kind of um, feedback have you gotten from people like friends who would probably even, should, in an ideal world, put in some effort into your cause? Money, I, I'm not talking about the volunteers that come in. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about the friends that you grew up with. Some of Even them are in their and billionaires and everything. Yeah. Who can say that, okay, can we even just stand for something as a group of people? Mm -hmm. You're doing something. What can we help you achieve? It's Has people, anybody given you? People, family and friends support mm -hmm. is not enough. Mm -hmm. um, I know, you know, you know, um, our culture, you can, you know, the this people, okay. People feel you have the finance mm. and the time and the opportunity mm. to do what you're doing, and they just leave you together with it. Mm. Um, they see it as helping to build your own legacy, mm. which is not the tied which, to them. Which, well, which is not tied to them, but they they they're missing the point well. of the the. The, the end users, the end, goal. The end, the end users. Mm. Um, we're, we're <coughs> the end doing, goal is yeah, the people benefiting. Yes, the end goal is the people benefiting from it. But this, they, 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 some, some. I'm not saying all. I'm not saying mm. a lot of people. Some have that narrow mindedness. mindedness. Yeah. 
Now you want the new build. Now you envision the new build. They don't see. They don't see the. They don't see the larger. They don't see the larger picture. But the ones, the ones that are closest to me, or the ones that are truly my friends. Yeah. It doesn't have to be money. When I have, when we have tournament, and I see them turn up to support, to watch, to watch, to support. Even if it's a bag of pure water. Yeah. You know, some people will come and say, oh, why is that child playing Even bare, bare, barefooted? Yeah. You know, why is he playing yeah. barefooted? Oh, mm. come. You know, they buy shoes for Absolutely. him or her. So there's been some level of support. Mm. It's the corporate support that's lacking. Right. Yes. And funny enough, Which back to where you were talking about, Lagos has so much, so much uh, activities that mm -hmm. you, ap uh, you approach corporate bodies in Lagos and the next response is, oh, you might know how I wish it was in Lagos. Mm. We will have supported you. Uh. you don't, why don't you bring it to Lagos? <laughs> quickly, let's quickly That's take our comments. Do. We ran out of time. I think you have a fan that's, because he's just been, Alade Suradewale. Yes. You know the person. I know mm. the person. Okay. So, he or she, is it a she? It's a he. It's a he. Welcoming the CEO of our own great Hoop Dreams Nigeria Academy and captain to NB. What's NB? After the show. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Aminu, I agree. Sports and education can go together. I am actually loving this vision because I know how much impact it can mm -hmm. have when we merge mm -hmm. that synergy together and have state government take it a lot more seriously. Mm -hmm. Because the only way the government can take it seriously is provide the right facilities across board and have it in every neighborhood. Then we can then have professionals like you to come and um, what's called manage those structures yes but thank you so much we had a fantastic conversation thank we're you. definitely going to be calling you back so you just know okay <laughs> thank you Norma. thank you lady now before we go and show you follow us on instagram twitter tiktok facebook everywhere at way show africa follow us where go where we know they go where we don't know <laughs> if you missed today's quote here it is again um it's much more than being a farmer you're out to help people and make this little part of the world farmable and productive. Mm -hmm. Make your little street uh, or block a better place. Make the world healthier. You see what he said about sports. He's even focusing on the health the area factor. factor. Mm -hmm. We'll yeah. see you guys at 8 p.m. tomorrow as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Enjoy. Bye-bye. <laughs>